And in the 1940s, a salesman with the wonderful name of Elmer Wheeler um, came up with the ultimate marketing line, and he did it in Time magazine. And it was like, guys, don't sell the sausage, you've got to sell the sizzle. And what he meant was that basically when you're trying to sell a piece of mashed up pig, if you're lucky, in a piece of pig intestine, if you're lucky, it's quite difficult to sell people on what the contents of a sausage are. Just for a moment, think about what the contents of a sausage are. Quite a difficult sell. Whereas the smell, the sizzle, the glisten, the idea of biting down on it, the bun even, the ketchup, all of that is something which a salesman can grasp and can work with. And when it comes to sustainable development, when it comes to sustainability, when it comes to doing the right thing, actually we spend a lot of the time selling the gristle. We spend a lot of our time selling the really difficult to chew parts of it. When you think about sustainable development, actually the, you're going to have to change your consumption fundamentally is a crucial part of it, but it ain't the only one. And we spend a lot of our time focusing on that. If we sell the sizzle, if we sell the desirable, if we sell the want, if we get the juices flowing, then perhaps we'd have a little bit more luck in getting people to buy the sausage. And that's what it's all about. It's about getting people to buy the sausage, getting people to do this, to take this action, and to do it consistently and sustainably. I want to tell you one little bad story. I was in the US and I was making a speech to a room full of American environmentalists and I deliberately wore my highest shoes and my shortest skirt just so that they knew that I wasn't one of them. Because, trust me, there was a, there was a, lot, of, um, a, a lot of kind of uh, uh, dreadlocks in the room and a lot of kind of righteousness, which actually I love as long as it's not evangelical, thou shalt be. And I said, imagine I'm the carbon fairy. I'm the carbon fairy. Hello. Zing. And with my little zing magic wand, I can, um, if I wave my magic wand, I can take us down to 250 parts per million carbon dioxide in the, in the atmosphere. 250. You know, we weren't, like, we weren't at 250 for quite a long time. But if I wave my magic wand and take us down to 250, and we'll stay at 250, there will be no extreme or dramatic climate change. If I wave my magic wand and if I bring that about, nobody will ever know. They will continue on with their rampant consumption. China will burn every ounce of coal that it has. We will get bigger houses and we will get bigger cars. And we will fly everywhere and we'll buy enormous amounts of stuff. And it will all be okay because I'm the carbon fairy and zing, I've kept us at 250 parts per million car uh, dioxide. In fact, actually, as a little bit of a um, buy one, get one free, I'll even make sure that we don't hit any of our resource constraints around water or pollution or air or forestry. All the little things. But nobody will ever have to feel guilty about anything that they've done. But like all fairies, I need the children's wishes in order to be able to do it. <laughs> So I need you all to put your hands up and say, yes, Carbon Fairy, we believe. Please wave your magic wand. And I asked them how many of them would want me to do that if I was the Carbon Fairy. And of a room of 200 people, two people raised their hands. In fact, this is the reason why we are living in an unsustainable world. I'm sorry, I refuse to blame our rampant consumption. I refuse to blame the mega businesses out there. I refuse to blame the failure of politicians. None of that, us, or any of those people. We're us. Actually, if it's going to happen, it's down to us to make it happen. The social enterprises in this room have got to get out of the fucking niche and they've got to get out there and they've got to replace the businesses that are already there.